Also note that when I charge the battery up to 1.5 volts, shown here, and then I disconnect the battery, the voltage across the capacitor still remains at 1.5 volts. So it's important that if you have a high voltage capacitor and you charge it up to 200 volts and then you disconnect it, the voltage across these two plates is still 200 volts. So when you're dealing with capacitors, especially high voltage capacitors, be careful. You need to basically short it out with a wire so that if you want to make sure the capacitor is fully discharged, you need to short this out with a wire. Hello, Dr. J here. Usually capacitors are divided into two categories, polarized and unpolarized. So far, I've discussed only unpolarized capacitors. Now, if this was a polarized capacitor, we need to make sure that the negative side, let's say this is the negative side of a polarized battery, is connected to a lower voltage potential than the positive side. Otherwise, these type of capacitors, the polarized capacitors, can explode. Now for unpolarized capacitor, it doesn't matter which end of a capacitor is connected to a circuit. The non-polarized capacitors do not require any observance of voltage polarities. Another way to increase the capacitance is to insert a dielectric or insulator in between the two conducting plates. And you can see here we have this same given capacitance of 8 0.89 times 10 to the minus 13 farads and when you insert this capacitor you see it quickly maxes out. Now the type of capacitor is usually based on the dielectric material and if you look here on the right side I can see Teflon has a dielectric constant of 2.1 paper 3.5 glass is 4.7 there are other types that are used usually ceramic you have tantalum type of capacitors, etc. Also, you have mica capacitors as well. Now, this dielectric constant of the material is also known as the permittivity, and it has units of farads per meter to describe the capacity capability of the material. And we're going to see the effects of the voltage across the plates and we're going to take a look at the electric field between the two plates as I insert the dielectric material. Now I'm going to apply some voltage across here. And we're going to take a look at the accumulated charge for the top plate. Now as I insert, you could see there's a net increase in positive charges. What happens is that the excess electrons form by the battery here creates an electric field thereby repelling the electrons in the dielectric material. Now as the dielectric material electrons leave or gets attracted to the positive plate it leaves a net positive charge in the dielectric material thereby having a net increase in charge. Now no charges cross between the two plates since this is an insulator. But what happens is that electrons are displaced in the dielectric material by the battery polarities or the electric by the battery which creates an electric field to displace these electrons. Hence leaving positive charges. Now let's take a look at the electric field. Okay so without the dielectric we have a net 20 8 volts per meter across between these two plates which leaves 28 volts per meter as the total sum and since there's no dielectric there's no electric field inside the dielectric. Now as I insert the dielectric we see that electric field opposes the one in the plate. So the electric field in the dielectric material which is 31 volts per meter opposes the one of uh, the electric field created by the battery leaving a net electric field of 28 volts per meter. Notice when I disconnect the battery it still 
0.284 volts with the dielectric material but as I remove the dielectric the voltage across it is increasing since here we have 60 volts per meter across these two plates then as I insert it the voltage is decreased because you'll get that in your future physics courses when you do take this topic area of electrostatics charges and capacitors in your physics courses.